Good afternoon, everyone, and a very, very warm welcome to the European Commission Sustainable Urban Mobility Awards, comprising the European Mobility Week Awards for 2020, the ninth award for Sustainable Urban Mobility Planning, and the EU Urban Road Safety Award. Now, this year's edition is hosted online for the first time by the European Commission Directorate General for Mobility and Transport. My name is Katrina Sickle, and I have the pleasure of presenting this annual award ceremony for the next hour from a studio in Flanders. I'm privileged to present these awards personally for the eighth year running, and it never stops being an honour and a lot of fun. In fact, why don't we take a trip now down memory lane and revisit some of the places and the venues where we were together in the past. The theatre at the La Plaza Hotel in Brussels, the last time we met before the world moved to digital gatherings. One of my personal favourites, having presented it there more than once, Théâtre de Vaudeville in Brussels. And still in Brussels, the Atomium. Now, that was a, lo that was a long time ago. In fact, some of you will remember those award ceremonies. Looking back, it's clear that we have so much to be proud of because in 2021, European Mobility Week is celebrating its 20 years of existence. So much creativity, so much commitment, so much passion is showcased every year. And this year is no exception. Almost 3,000 towns and cities organised European Mobility Week in 2020 in all sorts of different ways. And we thank you and say well done to all. And please don't forget to share your excitement this afternoon or whenever on social media. Hashtag Mobility Week. Now, for this year's virtual edition, I'm delighted to be able to chat live with EU Commissioner for Transport, Adina Valayan. So, can I ask the Commissioner to join us, please? Hello, welcome. Hi, hello, Katrina. I'm uh, very... Um, uh, pleased to be with you this afternoon. Thank you. It's, it's such a pleasure to have you with us, Commissioner, to officially open these fabulous annual awards and, and to tell us a bit more about this year's edition. So if I might start with a question on the theme, last year's European Mobility Week dealt with uh -huh. zero emission mobility for all, and it actually had the second high highest number of registrations ever, despite COVID-19. Now, Commissioner, did this high turnout come as a surprise to you? Katrina, allow me first to extend a very well, uh, welcome to our uh, virtual audience. We had nearly 3,000 registrations from 53 different countries. So to answer your question, this was a pleasant surprise. Even though we've been through a year that severely affected uh, our transport systems, the interest shown by so many cities and towns for sustainable urban mobility planning means that the pandemic forced us to rethink our habits and patterns. We have seen uh, many mobility changes during the COVID crisis. Many cities and towns have decided to reply to their citizens' needs by temporary measures. For example, Florence increased the number of available seats on their trams to increase capacity. Some of these measures have been permanent. Alimos, Greece introduced new bus lines uh, that better connect different parts of the territory. Likewise, in uh, Sozopol, Bulgaria, a new public transport route new, uh, connects now uh, remote areas with the city centre. Many additional bike lanes have been installed very quickly in many cities, and more space was given to pedestrians. In uh, Mohengladbach, Germany, public transport will be supplemented by shared mobility services to improve connection options. So uh, I'm pleased to know that uh, the initiatives I have just mentioned were also taken into consideration uh, for uh, these awards. Well, plenty of absolutely brilliant examples there of how people have really been, well, creating opportunities out of this pandemic in the area of sustainable urban mobility. So, Commissioner, perhaps you could tell us something about this year's theme, safe and healthy with sustainable mobility. This year's team aligns uh, with our sustainable and smart mobility strategy objectives. 
It does uh, this by inspiring increased use of active and sustainable travel options with a particular focus on our physical and mental well-being and road safety. Healthy mobility habits are an essential aspect of our lifestyle. There is plenty of scientific evidence that active mobility improves our brain function and our overall well-being. Safety within all transport modes remains our priority, but the road safety issue is quite special as it concerns us all, no matter we are drivers or pedestrians. I therefore count that uh, you will follow tomorrow the publication of our preliminary road safety statistics for 2020. We have a very rare piece of good news. There were about 4,000 fewer road fatalities in the EU in 2020 than in 2019. Of course, we had less traffic on the roads, and unfortunately, the decrease in fatalities is not proportional with the reduction of traffic. That is why we should not become complacent. Uh, this uh, result strengthens our motivation to put up uh, our efforts and work together to reach our goal of zero fatalities and serious injuries on the EU roads by 2050. I want to come back to the issue of public transport. COVID-19 pandemic had a significant impact on the use of public transportation, and we have to make extra efforts to promote it. Public transport is a safe, reliable, and essential service that provides mobility to all and helps to connect people. Last year, we elaborated a set of recommendations for the safe use of public transport in pandemic conditions, especially to avoid the general reluctance towards this type of transport mm -hmm. and see a resurgence in private car usage. But finally, there is a clear link between this year's theme and the European Year of Rail and the European Climate Pact. So we include publicity for these initiatives too. It's a busy year. Thank you so much. Interesting stuff there. Keep your eyes peeled for the report and really good to hear there that push and, and that reassurance about public transport. I have a last question uh, for you, Commissioner, uh, if I may, because you have often particularly mentioned the importance of sustainable urban mobility plans. So could you explain the benefits, please? Well, our cities are the best illustration of the incredible diversity of options we have in terms of mobility today. But these many options come with their respective challenges. A sustainable urban mobility plan is an answer to these challenges. We need a good coordination for all transport modes, including public transport, personal mobility, freight logistics. We need good planning for infrastructure, intelligent transport systems, and much more. Sustainable urban mobility planning directly impacts the road accident numbers by making infrastructure safer or setting clear speed limits. In Warsaw, for example, road deaths have declined by over 60 percent since they implemented their sustainable urban mobility plan. Another benefit of such planning is on cities' air quality. We still have around 400,000 premature deaths in Europe every year due to air pollution. Thanks to these urban mobility plans, municipalities can control and reduce pollution levels. Mm -hmm. Organizing urban infrastructure, travel and transport in a coordinated way, towns and cities will organically improve traffic flows, mm -hmm. reduce congestion, and incentivize the use of public transport and active mobility, such as cycling. For instance, where uh, cycling infrastructure is built, cycling will increase between 11 and 48 percent. Wow. So we can see that investing in infrastructure, it means uh, uh, picking up on uh, this habit in a higher percentage. In the context of uh, the upcoming uh, revision of our 10 network regulation, we are um, even looking into whether large and medium-sized urban nodes should actually develop their own sustainable urban mobility plan by 2030. So I can only strongly applaud and welcome policy and decision makers at the local, regional and national levels who engage in the uptake of sustainable urban mobility plans and seek inspiration from today's finalists. Many congratulations to you all. 
Well, thank you very much. And it's absolutely clear sustainable urban mobility plans work. I mean, there was such uh, a plethora of examples that came there from you, Commissioner. So thank you so much for very helpfully setting the scene for us today. And you can relax off stage just for a moment, please, Commissioner. Don't disconnect as I'll be asking you to join me again to reveal the winners' names in not too long. Dear participants, I also have the pleasure of a brief tete-a-tete -tete with another colleague from the European Commission, Deputy Director General of TG Move, Matthew Baldwin. Hello. Hello. How lovely, lovely, lovely Hello, to Katrina. have you Hello, here. Hello, Commissioner. Hello, everyone out there. <laughs> now, Matthew is here with me in the studio at the requisite physical distance in a very large and well-ventilated space. So, given that, can I engage you in a little conversation? Yes, you may. Right. Now, one of this year's awards, our lovely audience, is for urban road safety. So perhaps, Matthew, you can tell us how exactly the COVID-19 pandemic has impacted urban road safety. Well, the Commission was just touching on it a moment ago, wasn't she? We saw last year, under these uh, terrible lockdowns we've had, traffic dropped off as never before. Our quiet breathable cities suddenly took over, creating safer space for physically distance, walking and cycling. But what we saw as the pandemic, as the pandemic even, wore on uh, was traffic increasing again. And we have evidence of higher levels of speeding as some people took advantage of empty roads to literally put their foot down. We also saw, I'm afraid, more cases of drink and drug driving during this period. As a result, as Commissioner Verlan has just said, you, we've seen about 4,000 fewer road deaths across Europe in 2020. That's great, but it's not the reduction mm -hmm. that we'd hoped mm -hmm. for, mm -hmm. given the changes in traffic levels. So we have more work to do. And if I may, if I have one hope for the post-COVID era, it's that we can hold on to some of the positives that come out of it, namely increased active mobility, more space, for walking and cycling. And also we need to find ways to restore confidence in public transport and improve mm -hmm. its attractiveness. Mm -hmm. So tomorrow you can hear Commissioner Verlaine again at the first ever road safety results conference where we'll be presenting the 2020 road safety statistics in more detail. And we'll also be talking about member states' progress on the path to Vision Zero. So please, everyone out there, I invite you to join us online tomorrow. And importantly, for all of those who've not yet won the coveted EU Urban Road Safety Award, we're launching the new call for applications at the conference tomorrow with a deadline of the 31st of October, Halloween. Oh. So please, you have time to apply, please do so. Thank you so much and thank you very much for that preview there uh, the day before. So, road poll safety days. They take place during European Mobility Week. The question that I have now for you, Matthew, is how can road pole safety days help keep Europe's roads safe? Well, you're absolutely right. I mean, road traffic police officers are our vital partners in the shared efforts to eliminate road deaths and serious injuries. I think we should remember that the traffic police from across Europe are out there every day combating Speed, uh, speed driving, uh, testing for drinking and driving, monitoring that we're all using our seat belts, checking the safety of our trucks and buses. And the road pole safety days bring all of these issues to the fore and they showcase how the traffic police are joining forces across borders to make Europe's roads safer and help achieve our commitment to vision zero. Now, Apart from these road pole safety days, I'd like to find out about another important road safety initiative that all of us can look out for this year. And that, of course, is the United Nations Global Road Safety Week. Can you tell us more, please? Absolutely. Katrina, please mark your calendar. Everyone out there, it's another thing for you to mark in your diaries. The UN Global Road Safety Week at... UNGRSW in your calendars 18 to the 23rd of May. Please don't miss it because there's a particularly important theme this year. Mm -hmm. Again, evidence from around the world, we always work on evidence, shows that low speed streets reduce the risk of serious injuries and save lives. If we can have 30 kilometer hour speed limits where people and traffic mix, 
we help make streets that are healthy, green and livable. Mm -hmm. In other words, streets for life. Lower speeds in our urban streets make walking and cycling safer and more accessible, in turn encouraging healthier lifestyles. They help us move away from car dependence, bringing cleaner air and lower noise pollution. And they make our streets livable for everybody, the most vulnerable, children, senior citizens, people with disabilities. You know, Katrina, every day across the world, 3,000 children and young people are killed or seriously injured on our roads. Mm -hmm. A child hit by a car at 30 kilometers per hour can survive. Hit at 80 kilometers or even less, most will die because speed kills. So, last year we got to work in the Stockholm Declaration and in the follow-up UN General Assembly Resolution, it was agreed that we should support a maximum road travel speed of 30 kilometers per hour where vulnerable road users and motorized vehicles mix. That's why hashtag Love30 campaign is at the heart of the new UN Decade for Action for Road Safety and why it deserves your support. Look out for us on Twitter, hashtag Streets for Life, hashtag Love30. Hope you'll join in. Absolutely. Love30, love it. So mark, <laughs> mark that. Uh, what's happening? I thought we were in a closed studio. No, Someone on. left the door. <gasps> Edgar, it's you. Oh, <laughs> lovely to see you. No, 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 it's okay. You are at the right stop. We are celebrating the European Commission Sustainable Urban Mobility Award Ceremony. Do you have something? Do you have something? Oh. You do a trophy, but I need three more. Uh, okay, well, go and get them. Then I. Uh, he Bye. usually does what he's told, eventually. Uh, he usually does what he's told. All right, Matthew, well, listen, we are going to crack on with the first award, the EU Urban Road Safety Award. Now, before we reveal the city where Matthew, you will personally send the trophy, let's discover the three finalist cities who are competing for the prize.
Well, Matthew, look how speedy Edgar has been, because what do Incredible. we have right, yeah, right in the middle of our virtual stage? Well, the four trophies ready to be sent to the winning cities. Now, Matthew, to where will this first trophy be shipped? Well, we are now looking to find out who has won the Urban Road Safety Award. For reducing its number of road traffic victims by 60%, for involving local residents in road safety discussions, for its decision to reduce the speed limit on all roads in the city to 30 kilometers an hour, the winner of the EU Urban Road Safety Award is Bilbao! Huge, huge congratulations to Bilbao, Spain. And joining us live online is Alfonso Gil, who is Deputy Mayor of Bilbao. I've got to ask you, how do you feel as the winner of the EU Urban Road Safety Award? Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I'm very pleased to be with you. I want to thank the European Commissioner from Transport, Adina Balian, and Matthew Baldwin, Deputy General the Director for Mobility and Transport of the European Union for this European Urban Road Safety Award. It's an international recognition that I would like to share with each and every one of the peoples of Bilbao, since without their collective effort, uh, it would have been impossible to position the city of Bilbao as a world benchmark for sustainable and healthy urban mobility. Today, Bilbao is being talked about all over the world because of its mobility, because of the city's fine commitment to euro mobility, which aims to improve people's quality of life. The cities of the future are for everyone, or they will not be. And that is done with joint work. Thank you. Well, a huge, huge well done again. And the trophy is coming your way shortly, so please listen out for the courier. And now, actually, Alfonso, you can just sit back and relax and enjoy the rest of the show. Lucky you. Yeah. Uh, hang on, I think. Oh, yes, I do. I hear something. There you are again, Edgar. And oh. this time he's opted for the train. Hello. Well, well done, you. But listen, I need you to... No, no, it's just... He's gone. Well, thank you, Edgar, for reminding us all that 2021 is, of course, the European Year of Rail. Moving by train has many benefits. It's green, safe, smart, connects people and businesses. Trains are green and account for only 0.5% of transport greenhouse gas emissions in the EU. European Rail accounts for only 2% of the total transport energy consumption in the EU, while it carries over 11% of its freight and over 6% of its passengers. Less fuel means less pollution. If you choose to travel by train instead of flying, your CO2 emissions will be cut in half. Trains are safe. In fact, Europe's railways are among the safest in the world. High safety requirements are harmonized for all member states. So are the contingency management plans, which are continuously improved. Just like today in this healthcare crisis, to ensure essential services to both passengers and transporters of goods. Trains are smart. They allow you to stay connected, to charge your devices, and to get ahead with your work, or simply to relax and watch your favorite online series, all while on board. Innovative rail solutions are being developed to provide digital services such as mobile ticketing for passengers, tracking and tracing for freight transporters, and modern signalling and control systems for operators. Our rail companies are world champions and a valuable source of jobs and growth in Europe. The EU is the largest net exporter of the rail supply industry in the world and plays a major role in innovation in the manufacturing market. Try cities, regions and entire countries. In Europe, railways cover a dense network spanning cities big and small not just within the EU member states, but also in the neighbouring countries. It's a great way to discover lesser-known destinations and to transport goods across Europe. Most importantly, trains are accessible. Most European citizens have door-to-door -door connections to the key hubs, stations and terminals. So wherever you're headed, 
transporting, connecting, moving by train is your way forward. 2021, the European Year of Rail. So, Matthew, let us crack on with the second award, the Award for Sustainable Urban Mobility Planning. Now, before I invite Commissioner Valian to reveal the winner, let's discover the three finalist cities competing for the prize. So a warm welcome back to Commissioner Valian. Matthew, we have the Commissioner here to announce the winning city, but uh, she has no envelope. Can you what? help? Please help. I don't want the envelope. Uh, Matthew, please, uh, please help. This one. You want this envelope? That one? Well, the Commissioner Com would like that envelope. Okay, Commissioner, it's right here. Excuse me. Ah. Uh, Commissioner, ah. over to you. Fantastic, you have it. As please, if by magic. As if by magic. Please announce the winner, Commissioner. So, thank you, Matthew, for providing the envelope. <laughs> now, for the nice um, Sustainable Urban Mobility Plans Award, for its integrated and structured approach to planning for including socially vulnerable groups in its vision and for reducing car traffic and cycling. So cleaner. First, for sustainable urban mobility planning is the Greater Grenoble Area Mobility for Grenoble Alpes. Fantastic. Warm, warm congratulations to the Greater Grenoble Area Mobility Authority. And here we have a message from its president, Sylvain Laval. Good afternoon, all. First of all, a big thank you on behalf of SMAG, Greater Grenoble Area Mobility Authority in English, for this award which is collectively appreciated by all elected officials in the territory, former elected officials as well as current ones. This is the reward for all those involved in mobility and it is obviously an honor for all the work that has been accomplished in the organization of mobility. In a few words, the mobility plan for the territory of Grenoble is 
already working on the organization of mobility on the scale of the territory of Grenoble. The catchment area with Grésivaudan on the Pays Voironné and even other territories. Offer an attractive and strict public transport offer to win over new users. Set up cycle and pedestrian routes everywhere and not only in urban centers. Carry out an exemplary fleet renewal policy based on very low emission vehicles. We still have many challenges ahead of us for sustainable and multimodal mobility that is possible for all users. Once again, a big thank you on behalf of SMAG. Warm congratulations and the trophy is shortly en route to Grenoble. Well, hang on. Oh, it's Garina. Oh, how lovely to meet you. Wow. Hello. Have you seen Edgar? Oh, I don't think he managed to get off the train at the right stop. <laughs> oh, uh, never mind. I see you've got... Oh, I see you've got something lovely. Oh, that does bring back lovely memories, Matthew. This blue and yellow flower was the first ever logo of European Mobility Week when it was launched in 2002. And 20 years later, the European Commission's flagship campaign on sustainable urban mobility has flourished. It's sure grown, have. it's evolved, but its message is still as relevant two decades on. So thanks so much to Ed Garina there. And Matthew, let's go on now with the European Mobility Week Awards. Now, this year, participating towns and cities made a really, really great effort to keep things moving in a safe way during the whole year, but also in September during the celebrations of European Mobility Week. So let's travel first to the smaller municipalities. And before I ask you, Matthew, to reveal the winner, let's put the three finalists competing for the prize under the spotlight. Matthew, you're the man with the envelope, so can you please reveal the winner? OK, if you insist. I could get used to this now. <laughs> for its rich programme of activities, for its partnerships with schools and other cities, 
for its permanent reallocation of road space in favor of pedestrians and cyclists. The winner of the European Mobility Week Award for smaller municipalities is Lilienthal. Congratulations to Lilienthal, Germany. And joining us live online is Christian Tangerman, who is mayor of Lilienthal. Well done, well done. What does it mean for you and for the city to win this particular award? With supporters. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, this was so exciting. We really feel honored to win this award. Lilienthal offered a huge range of activities to bring attention to sustainable mobility with a great support of local journalists. <laughs> what we believe was exceptional is the idea of invitating everyone to offer and join activities. With very little budget, we but achieve public awareness and particip participation beyond the entire. Major actions had been the car free school day, zero emission car ways, the street belongs to everyone, politicians give away their car key. One point we would like to share is our approach to combine, to combine fun and activities actions with sustainable mobility, as it's all about people. It's about creating a positive experience to change habits, to try out something new, and therewith support a more sustainable future. Thank you very much. With best greetings from Leyenthal, back to Brussels. <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. You have to be really proud, and you absolutely have the best background that Zoom or any other digital no, platform could, got to. could <laughs> offer. That's what we need. We need those supporters at every possible meeting that we have. Brilliant. So thank you so much to all of you. You're brilliant. So Matthew is, of course, going to get the trophy to you very shortly. So Promise. you need to think about where you can display it. And now they can relax and enjoy the rest of the show because... Dearest participants, we are going to move straight on to the fourth and last of today's awards. And that's the European Mobility Week Award for larger municipalities. So welcome back to the Commissioner. And before I ask Commissioner Valian to reveal the winner, let's of course enjoy just a snapshot of the three finalist cities competing for the prize.
Commissioner, may I please ask you to reveal the winner? <laughs> so, now. I'm, I'm not sure we can hear the Commissioner. Oh, we, uh, st uh, we couldn't hear you for a moment, Commissioner. Kindly, uh, kindly start again. Yes. So ah, wonderful. Please, Thank you for involving people of all ages and abilities in its program of events, for incorporating feedback directly from local residents, and for launching a new electric car and bike sharing scheme. The winner of the European Mobility Week Awards is Mohen Gladbach. Huge congratulations to München Gladbach, Germany. And joining us live online now is Felix Heinrichs, who is mayor of München Gladbach. An absolutely brilliant achievement, really. And so what does it mean for you and, of course, for the city to win this particular award? Good afternoon. I'm very happy, grateful and proud of this particular award, especially in this pandemic time. All of us in München Gladbach feel encouraged to continue on our path. Clearly, Gladbach is not yet famous for sustainable mobility. Currently, private passenger transport still dominates the split, but we are about to change that. With many different measures, we are trying to improve our transport. We expand our public transport network. We offer smart sharing options, such as bike and car sharing. We enlarge our cycle path and related infrastructure, like the cycle sank posing system. We share space. A city could not be dominated by traffic, but allow for enough space for walking, playing, getting in contact with people and enjoying life. Only a city with a good mixture of different mobility options offers high quality of life. Therefore, sustainable mobility is indispensable. We can only steer our mobility towards more sustainability because of a great network and partners who support our projects and, of course, the European Mobility Week. We work to re together with companies and different municipals, non-profit associations and initiatives, artists, schools and kindergartens, and most importantly, our citizens. We also work across borders. For example, we collaborate with Dutch cities, Romont and Fendo, to develop and install a cross-border sharing system. We work jointly on a climate-friendly and accessible mobility for all ages. That means supporting children in getting to school safely or elderly in ensuring an environment that enables them to move comfortably and safely by using different tools such as wheelchairs or walking frames. We know that we, that we still have a lot of work ahead of us on our pathway to more sustainable mobility. There is still much to do, but we are proud that our engagement and commitment is recognized and that we won the European Mobility Week Award. This shows that we did a great job so far and we improve a lot. We know that there lies a lot of work ahead of us, but this will boost our confidence. We are excited about taking the next steps for a sustainable and accessible mobility for all in Mönchengladbach. Thank you to the European Commission and thank you, Edgar. See you again in Mönchengladbach. <laughs> Wonderful. And you talk there of the value of space and the value of those mixed yeah. mobility options and all Fantastic. of those plans for moving forward. You must be delighted. So well deserved. And Matthew here will ensure that that trophy comes to you at yes, top speed. Yep. So you better get ready to show it off there. So you can relax, but not quite yet because... As I'm just about to close today's delightful ceremony, I'd like to ask the representatives of all of the winning cities to please come back to join on screen and take part in a family photo with the Commissioner and with Matthew, the Deputy Director General. So we're going to move and invite everybody to come back. We're going to, there we go, we're going to let everybody be seen. You need to smile, ladies and gentlemen, as I always say, like a monkey with a new banana. So <laughs> smile and make us feel like we're all in the same room because you're all brilliant.
and well, well deserved winners. So I think I've given enough time for a fabulous photo. <laughs> So thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We can, uh, Matthew, come back and take almost centre stage again. I really do thank you all. And I say again, a huge well done, of course, to our fabulous winners, but also to our equally fabulous finalists. All of you, all of the hard work has been recognised and appreciated. So uh, I think we're nearly, nearly... Uh, oh, <gasps> not again. Yes. Oh, hello. You want something heavy? or important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, well done for going the last mile on a cargo bike. Uh, go on. Oh, a video. Let's watch, Matthew. What could be nicer? And there you have it, dear audience, the theme of the next European Mobility Week 2021, safe and healthy with sustainable mobility. And as we look ahead with optimism, I'd like to thank the European Commission for organising and supporting these awards. Commissioner Valéan, Deputy Director General Matthew Baldwin for participating with me in this year's virtual edition of the European Commission Sustainable Urban Mobility Awards. I could not have done it without you, Matthew, <laughs> nor without the Commissioner. Thanks to, to the technicians here in Flanders, in our studio, and a big thanks to, to Eurocities, ICLE and Polis for the organisation of this heartwarming and informative event. And last but not least, sincere thanks to all finalists, winners, participants and viewers. Do join the 20-year celebration during the course of 2021 and highlight now in your calendars, September the 16th to the 22nd for the next European Mobility Week. Because this much-loved and popular EU initiative is here to stay and frankly... Matthew, don't you think? Frankly, it rocks. <laughs> it certainly does. And on that warm and fuzzy note, please get busy on social media and spread the love and joy to the wider sustainable urban mobility community via hashtag Mobility Week. That's it from me, your presenter, Katrina Sickle. Stay safe, stay well, and hopefully see you in person next year. Fingers well crossed. <laughs>